So how can these children be better protected? Let me turn to uh, Bill Freilich. He's the director of the refugee program at Human Rights Watch. Bill, welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, can you first of all explain to us the distinction between human smuggling and human or child trafficking? Yes, it's, and it is a, an important distinction. Trafficking involves moving people unwillingly against their will, either through threats or violence or deceiving them. Uh, smuggling is actually something that the, the migrant enters into willingly, uh, paying for a service. And generally speaking, after the person has been smuggled across the border, the, the migrant parts ways from the smuggler, and that's the end of the story. Um, smuggling and trafficking both are cr international crimes. They're defined in what are called the Palermo Protocols, but they are defined differently, and the distinction is quite important because trafficking, by definition, is a human rights violation. It's, it's forcing people against their will. It's exploiting them after they've actually made the trip. Um, and that violates their rights. So, of course, it, it, it is a, uh, an area that Human Rights Watch is quite concerned about. So, Whereas smuggling is, is a crime against the state. It, it, it moves people across a border, but it's not necessarily a violation of the rights of the individual who willingly entered into that contract, if you will, with the smuggler. So, Bill, let me ask you this. Can something start out as human smuggling and turn into trafficking. Absolutely, absolutely. And there, we certainly have documented those kinds of cases where people started out you know, paying for a smuggler and then maybe the smuggler engaged with traffickers along the way. And one of the most common things that we've seen is uh, people that are then in the hands of traffickers. They are not free to leave. Um, they're held for ransom. Uh, traffickers will put, uh, you know, they find their cell phones with numbers of their families back home, uh, put the, the, uh, the phones up to their ears, call the families, and then, uh, and then actually torture people or threaten to torture them unless the uh, families pay up uh, ransoms, essentially. That's exploitation. That's a, really a form of human slavery. Uh, forced prostitution, forced labor are all elements that would that would qualify as trafficking, and and there can be this this process of morphing from smuggling into trafficking. And the other thing is that smugglers can be really nasty people as well. And they can overload boats, for example, put people's lives in danger, but they're not necessarily exploiting them at the end of the day. So it wouldn't define. As, as trafficking, but it could also involve uh, crimes against those migrants along the way. So, Bill, who are these traffickers, and is there ever a situation where this has a positive outcome for families, for children who reach out to these common criminals? Well, I wouldn't say that, that, that trafficking ever has a a positive outcome because the outcome of that is exploitation. I mean, unless someone is 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 freed from the the trafficker, smuggling, on the other hand, uh, you know, from the perspective of a refugee, of an asylum seeker, uh, can have a very positive outcome because if safe and legal means of reaching your preferred asylum country, Germany, say, um, are stymied and you can't find a way to to enter that country in a lawful manner, in a safe and orderly manner, you pay a smuggler to get you there, and it's, you know, it's a payment for a service. The service is performed. You part ways. You have nothing further to do with the smuggler, and you're able to apply for asylum at the other end. So that does, in fact, have a happy ending. And the overwhelming majority of cases that we've encountered in both North Africa and Turkey and along the, the, the West Balkans route are people that are engaged with smugglers. These are not on the whole, trafficking operations from what we've been able to document at Human Rights Watch. Bill Freilich, thank you so much, sir, for your time.